to 30 inches of vacuum, and that's from a draft. That's sucking water into it. And there's a little hash mark on most gauges. There might be two hash marks on there. That's about 22 to 24 inches of vacuum, which is about max vacuum that we have if our pump is good. Um, we won't, generally speaking, get to 30. Um, and what 22 to 24 inches of vacuum says, that'll pull water 22 to 24 feet straight up. Um, again, when we're drafting out of the dump tank or something like that, it isn't. Um, where it does become a concern is if you get in a shallow water source, um, a stagnant slough or pond or something like that in the middle of the summer that's warm, we can actually uh, boil water in our pump, which kind of goes back to cavitation. Um, so if we've got a hot water supply and we're pulling that water in, at room temperature, I can boil water at 72 degrees at 30 inches of vacuum. So if we put it in a vacuum chamber, put a vacuum pump on it, we can boil water in here. But we can do the same thing in our pump. If we get a hot summer day where our water is 60 degrees and we pull 20 inches of vacuum on it, we could start to, to, to uh, cavitate our pump even though we're getting all the water we want. What happens when we cavitate it or when we pull too much? When we put a vacuum on it, the water tries to boil in the eye of our impeller. It's only there for just a millisecond. When it goes to the pressure side of the, the, the discharge side of the pump, it hammers back together. That's the gravelly, gritty sound in there. If we did it bad enough, it could actually boil and put a bubble in the eye of our impeller where we couldn't get water through there. Very drastic, but it could be done. Um, because we know that water expands 1,700 times when it goes to steam. And so when we're drafting, we want to look at that. Like I said, if we get down to about 20 inches of vacuum, that's about all we got. Um, then we have to either establish an auxiliary inlet, another inlet, something like that. When we're operating on a hybrid system, We'll be on the positive side, 20 PSI positive is like zero. We can't take anybody any more than that. Anybody work for the water system here, Tom? Smiles, but nobody wants to know. Um, we, we just lost one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, sorry. No. Short subject, no. Um, oh, he's, he's, he's a good guy. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough loss for us. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I mean, 20, he's retired. Okay. <laughs> 20 PSI pounds. It's making it really bad. <laughs> um, the reason being, and our old, our old hands out there said, oh, we just put our, our foot on a soft suction hose. If it starts to get soft, we know that we're getting there. Well, where that science came from is we've got 14.7 atmospheric pressure holding us on the ground. So essentially 15 pounds just to hold the hose open. Well, if we set at 20, that's when it starts to get soft. So the old guys were sharp. They had some science behind them. They just didn't know what it was. So that's, that's where that came from. But in our water main, in our water main, where we have a change of size, we'll create a negative pressure here. And it's a venturi. So we can collapse a water main blocks away from our seam because we draw that. So we've got to leave 20 in there to keep from creating a negative pressure where we change sizes. So 20 PSI positive is like zero. We can't take any more than that. Um, in my department, our chief knows we don't listen. So he says 30 because he knows we're going to push the boundary a little bit. So if he says 30, we're going to push him 10%. Yeah, we're good. But, um, so that's what, when we hit essentially 20 PSI positive or 20 PSI negative, that's about all we can do depending on our operation. So then we have our discharge gauge. This is what our pump is making for us. And we'll say tonight, 150 or for now. And that's what it's putting out. Uh, if we've got a pressure relief valve, we can set our pressure relief valve at that or just above that. Um, the way we would set a pressure relief valve, we would get our first line operating or get our pump working at 150 PSI, have it in the on position, and as long as it's in the closed position, we would just decrease our pressure until our yellow light came on, go back up half to three quarters of a turn, it should go back to the closed position and we're set. If it happens that we're trying to get 150 and we get to 140 and it starts relieving, then we just increase our pressure, maybe a turn, and then we have to wait for it because it does have a delay going from the open to the close. If we just crank it until it actually goes to close, we're going to be way up above it. So a half to three quarters of a turn, I always say just take your hand off, reset your hand, and it should be good. Half to three quarters of a turn, 
When we get there, now we might be able to throttle our truck up a little more, and it's kind of a dance. You throttle up a little bit, you increase your pressure. We don't want to crank a bunch, and, and we don't want to have our pressure way up there. We never want to, if our relief valve is open, we never want to shut our relief valve off on the switch because we have no idea where it's going to go to. So um, we never ever shut our relief valve off if it's in the open position. And we generally don't want to operate, turn it on and off when it's when we're working, when we're pumping it. Because if it's off and we go to open, maybe some kid tour was through and they cranked it down to zero, now our firefighters have nothing. So we just, we you know, you can leave them in the on position. Um, the only time that I would say different than that is maybe on a relay pump or something like that where you had excess pressure or something. But generally speaking, we can set our relief valve pretty quick. Um, so we've got our discharge pressure set at 150. We figured out that this line here is our longest line, highest pressure. We're going to set that at 150. So that valve is wide open. We slowly open it all the way up. But the second line we pull off is a little shorter inch and three quarter line. And we only want that one at 125. How do we do that? Use a valve and gate it back. Yeah, gate it back. So now earlier in class when I talked about a, a nozzle, we said a ball valve is made to be open fully or closed fully. Most of our fire trucks are all ball valves on that. We can get by gating a valve on there because you've got all that hose to take the turbulence out of the water. It's not going to hurt that valve to, hold, uh, to be partial, but all that turbulence is going to come out of your hose. So on a fire truck, we can gate our valves. So yeah, all we do is we just restrict how much pressure gets out of it. Um, so that will tell us um, the nozzle has to be open. So now we know if that nozzle is flowing water or not flowing water. If they shut the nozzle off, our pump just pressurizes that whole system to 150. So our gauge will be 150. When they open the nozzle back up, it'll drop down to 125. So we know if they're flowing water or not flowing water. Now this line's a little harder to tell because it's always at 150. Um, what we can do there is if we take and gate that back a little bit, their nozzle's open, it should drop that pressure down. We see a little drop, just open it back up, everything's fine. They won't notice that little drop in it. If we gate it back a little bit and it doesn't drop, we gate it a little more and it doesn't drop, we know that nozzle's off. Still want to open it all the way back up, but we know that line's not full of water. So if neither one was full of water, we want to start recirculating a little water like that. So we can have multiple different lines at multiple different pressures. Maybe this one's at 100, it's a two and a half or something like that. Um, but if it's at 150 or the same as what our pump discharge pressure is, we know it's not flowing. If it is flowing, it's where our gated pressure is. Um, the hardest part on push-pull valves is breaking the seat of the valve or getting it open that first time. When we do this, when we open these up, if we look at a firefighter perspective, we were told to pull a line, we grab the nozzle, we walk to the front door, we call for water. Our pump operator pops it open, our nozzle's closed, our line pressurizes to 150 because that's what our pump is making, and then we open it up, bleed our pattern, bleed our air off, set our pattern, and we close it down. Well, when we first open it up, it's pretty quick going to jump to 150 because our nozzle's closed. Don't shut it right away. Give it a little time. Because um, if we shut it right away, when they open their nozzle up, they don't have anything. And then we've got to break that seat on that valve and open it back up. And the higher pressures we run, you know, when we get up 150, 160, sometimes it's hard to open some of those valves. So, um, we may not get it a perfectly fine-tuned adjusted before they shut it back down. Because like I say, they're going to open their nozzle, they're going to set their pattern, bleed off the air, they're going to shut it down. So you got maybe two or three seconds there. Then they're going to force the front door and they're going to go in and start fighting fire. And we're going to see them open a the nozzle, our pressure will drop, shut the nozzle, advance ahead, open the nozzle. So we're going to see it jump up and down quite a bit. Not a problem. We don't have to react to it. When they shut the nozzle, they're not fighting nozzle reaction. The hose is already full of water, so it can't get any heavier. All it is is just a little bit stiffer hose. So it's not a problem. Um, if we're operating and we uh, rupture a hose, what do we expect our line pressure to do? It'll drop because our hose isn't containing that extra pressure. And it'll drop significantly. Um, what's the corrective action for that? Close the valve. Exactly. Sometimes I hear, hit the idle button. 
Well, if we've got multiple lines working and we hit the idle button, nobody has anything or very little. So that's it. We, the only step I'll say further is communicate with our crews because they might be in an interior firefight and they lost pressure, but that might be all they have protecting them. So we wouldn't shut it down right away until we know that they're in a safe spot and then we safely shut it down. We wouldn't pull that line open and give it more pressure because it might blow that hose completely open. Um, so we communicate with them as quick as possible, get them to a safe area, and then shut that line down. <clears throat> um, on the idle button, on our electronic controls or on our veneer throttles, um, I jokingly say the only time we ever hit the idle button is if the truck itself is on fire. Um, because if we do it while we're practicing, tonight on my trailer, it won't hurt anything. Things will jump a little bit, it's not going to hurt anything. But say we're flowing a deck gun, we're out playing tomorrow, and we hit that idle button. So we went from flowing 1,200 gallons a minute to 100 gallons a minute. That's a big water hammer in our water main. Um, one of the, and I don't have it on these slides, but um, if we're flowing 1,000 gallons a minute through a 4-inch supply line, the water in that line is moving at 53 miles an hour. That's science. I can't change it. That's just how fast it's moving. Um, and it's actually how many feet per second. But anyway, 53 miles per hour. If we stop it cold, it creates like 295,000 foot-pounds of torque. It's astronomical how much torque. Well, where's that going to bubble out at? We don't know. So it's really important that like the idle button is, is truly a last resort thing. We know how to control a hose line, things like that. And even while we're training, while we're practicing, I don't just always decelerate controlled because if we do it in a uh, practice, we're going to do it in a in the real thing. So uh, always do a de uh, controlled deceleration on it. Um, any questions on the gauges, how they work, what they tell us? We'll get to see it a lot better out on the simulator um, or on your engine, actually, when we hook it to the simulator. Um, any questions for me? All right. Um, what we'll need is, and I don't know if you want to um, get close to the hydrant and fill, I need about 2,000 gallons of water. Um, we can either take it off your tank or pumper, or we can take it out of the hydrant, and when we're done, we'll just dump it. Um, two lengths of inch and three quarter hose, and two lengths of two and a half inch hose. Uh, what we'll do is, it takes me about 10 minutes to get my computer set up. I'll have a hard suction coming out the walkthrough door on my trailer. Um, we'll hook that to your truck, and then the four hand line or the four hose lines will go from the back of my trailer into your truck, any orifice on there. If you have, like, if we use the front bumper discharge and we need an extra length, that won't hurt anything. My trailer will simulate firefighters on the end of a hose. I've got valves that I can open and close, um, so nobody's going to be holding nozzles or anything like that. Um, what we'll do is probably everybody can stand there, but. Two or three at a time come up to the pump panel and you can watch it um, and then we'll just kind of roll through like that. I'll give you a couple scenarios, um, then we'll swap groups and come up. If you've got any new guys that need practice putting the pump in and out of gear, we can do that. Um, otherwise, we'll just let it recirculate water. It's no big deal, but um, the chief or your training officer, you guys know best who needs the practice on that stuff. Um, other than that, any let's, let's just have every group. Go through putting the pump, putting in the pump, taking out the pump. That okay. way, it's part of their, you know, yep. they're oh, the that's operator. Fine. That's just they're getting it from the start. You bet. So not I mean, a, problem. a lot of them, they're they're fine. I'm not saying that they're nope, good that's at it. That's fine. Um, and I have no preference on gear. Whatever the weather dictates. I don't know if you guys have a training preference of of whatever. So that's up to up to the department. But I'll be in this. So um, you want to. What, here. Why, why don't we go over to the front of the hall here? We'll put a 50 foot uh, two and a half off that hydrant. And okay. we'll just use uh, 21 right here. Then we can leave the other truck set. And maybe uh, what we'll do is if we'll take maybe about half at a time, and the other half can work on truck checks. You bet. And then swap. Does yep. that work That'll for work you? Fine. Does that work for you guys? Does it make sense to get. Otherwise, we'll get too big of a group, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did everybody sign the carbon copy one? 